Hey guys, Nick Stock with Demonic Procedures here. We're going to be doing a UDK tutorial uh, with the Unreal Development Kit. We're going to go over the very basics such as moving around the different viewports and making a small room. So let's jump right into this. When you open up you'll have these four windows and what these windows are are your different views. The bottom left here is the perspective and you can tell that by a P. The top buck here is the top view looking right down from your uh, from the top to your level. Uh, the right top right is the side view looking at your map from the side and the bottom right is the front view looking at the front of your level. If we go back into the perspective window here we can use the left click to move frontwards and backwards and look left and right. So we can move around such as that. We can use the right click to kind of stand still and angle our head around. It moves in a complete 360 degree in any way you would like to go. And the left and right click will let us strafe up and down and left and right and I love how I said up and went down a little bit dyslexic okay so uh, we have our little area here and what we're, first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go oh, and to move in these windows here left click move around like that right and left click zoom in and zoom out and the same for these you can use your scroll wheel if you have it but um, it doesn't I don't ever really use it because it's too slow you can tell which window is activated by this little yellow box. So um, even though uh, this window is activated, if I'm over here scrolling, it's going to scroll in that window because I have that window activated. So make sure you click in the window, and that's how you activate that window. So we're going to hit File. We're going to go to New. And first, we're going to start from working in Subtractive Worlds because it's easier for beginners. So we'll hit OK on that. Now that we're working in a Subtractive World, we can actually make our first room. You'll see here when you start up this red box, and that's called a Builder Brush. You'll use this to make your world, starting off anyways. It's used to make basic geometry such as walls, floors, ceilings, and uh, just basically any kind of basic geometry, boxes or crates, things of that nature. Um, over here you can see the different types of Builder Brushes. You have a cube, a cone, a curved staircase, a cylinder, a linear staircase, a sheet, a spiral staircase, a sphere, and a card setup which is basically two planes intersecting. First we're just going to stick with the cube for this very beginning tutorial. Now to to understand how to build how you're building this world, I'm going to go over into this wire fr brush wireframe mode. If I click that little button here and I can see this really big wireframe box if I select it and highlight it, you can probably see it a little bit better. Really big box that encompasses our entire world. We cannot build outside of this world. This is our entire world here that we can build into. We cannot go out of this box. Pretend this box is a solid piece of mass. It is a rock or we're underground and this is our ground world and we're going to dig out rooms to make our level. So to do this we're going to select our builder brush and we're going to go over here to CSG subtract and that will subtract space out. Now it looks like nothing happened. The reason is because I have it in brush wireframe mode. If I go to unlit mode I will suddenly see my room. And basically what unlit mode is, is it puts a default lighting on everything in your world. So right now I just put a very default kind of regular lighting on everything in my world. Well, we have our room, but we need some lights so we can see stuff in our room. So to add a light, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can hold L on the keyboard key, and this is my preference. Hold L and left click on the floor. That will make a light, which you can then move up using the translation widget and selecting the Z or blue arrow. Uh, to move it upwards and time it or up in space. So now we have this light that we can kind of move around. And we can use these different widget arrows to move it left or right and frontwards and back and up and down and all that other good stuff. Another way to add light is to right click the floor and go to add actor and add light point. But since I already have one, there's no point in doing that. So what else do we need? We need a player start. We need to tell the program where the player is going to start when we start our map. So we're going to right click the floor, we're going to go to add actor, and add player start. Now we have a player start, it looks like a little joystick and it has kind of an arrow sticking off the end of it. That arrow tells the computer which way the, com the character will be facing when he spawns in. So when he spawns in, he'll be facing this wall here in the X axis. So now that we have a light and a room and a character start, let's try to play our level. We have up here at the top right a play this level in the editor window button. It is, looks like a little tiny joystick, so let's click that, and we spawn into our room, but we cannot see anything even though we added a light. It says in the top, lighting needs to be rebuilt and paths need to be rebuilt. So if I hit the escape key to exit out of that, 
What it means by lighting needs to be rebuilt is, yes, we've added a light, we've added a player starting, we've added a room, but we need to kind of calculate all this and see how the light's going to react and see what's going on. So to do that, we need to build the level out. All right here we have a build all button, and it's a cube and a kind of like a little light bulb. We're going to click that, and it's going to collect some scene data, and then it's going to start building the world out with this new swarm agent, which is new in the UDK engine. So it's going to start doing this. It's going to run a light map, running a light mass, and it just takes forever to do this. It will take a good hour. You can see it kind of moving along here. It's emitting indirect photons and all this other <laughs> stuff that just, it takes forever. It's ridiculous. Um, so to speed this up, I'm going to exit that out, and I'm going to stop the build and close down this and close down that. So to speed this up, I'm going to select our builder brush again and go down here to our add volume. I'm going to right click and add a light mass importance volume. This basically makes it easier, if I move this builder brush out of the way, basically makes it easier for the computer to understand what's going on. And I can select this kind of yellowish brush. That is our light mass importance volume encompassing our whole map. And you'll see a really big difference here when I hit the build all button. It's going to collect some scene data. Still collecting, and now it's building, and now it's done. That took a lot faster than the other one. The other one would have took at least 30 minutes, probably, to build this small level. But we did get some errors, so what do these errors mean? It says, map should have kills set to it, and I'm not worried about that for the moment. But this other one, it says, brush 4. Brush has a null material reference. Well, what does that mean? It means when you build a room, you, the UDK engine has to put some kind of texture on these walls, and since you haven't designated the texture, it's going to put on this checkerboard default texture pattern, and it just puts it on everything. It's just like, here's a texture, we're throwing it on there, but it's also giving you an error and saying, hey, you're using a default texture, and you should use something very nice and pretty and a cool texture, and you're like, hey, stop telling me what to do. I just want to see what it looks like. So we're going to ignore the error for now, and we're going to play the level. And we drop in, and now we can see our level. We have a checkerboard room with our gun, and we can fire and run around and jump. I'm using the W, S, A, and D keys to move around. You can also use the arrow keys. Now I'm going to hit escape to leave. Let me check and see how much time I have here. Seven minutes. We're still good. All right, so what else do we need to do? Well, we don't really need to do anything else. We have our level, but I'm going to go over some other things here. I'm going to go over a little bit uh, of what this is. So, <clears throat> the different views. We have our brush wireframe view, which basically just shows us a wireframe of everything in our level. We have a wireframe view, which breaks down that brush wireframe into tries. And a try is a three-point polygon with one, two, three points. One, two, three points instead of a quad polygon, which is one, two, three, four points. Every game engine that I know of works with tries and that's just how it rolls. So then we have our unlit view, which I already told you, just basically throws a, a default lighting on everything so you can kind of just move around the level quicker. It, it lets the processor kind of take a break. Uh, the lit view, which basically shows us how our lighting is affecting the level right now. So you can kind of see that I have uh, these kind of dark spots in the corners and stuff. And if I move my light up, you can kind of see how it's affecting the different areas and stuff like that. Next, we have our lighting only view. And this just shows us the only it only shows us the lighting within the level. So where it's white, it's getting light, and where it's black, it's not getting so much light. And if I move this closer and closer, you can kind of see it starts to develop a hot spot on the ceiling, and then kind of fades out towards the rest of everything else. Um, those are really the only ones I use. I don't usually ever use lighting complexity or dextrogency or anything like that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I think that'll be it for now since I'm running out of time. But I'm going to cover a lot more, trust me, I just want to get to these basics of the UDK because some things have changed like the swarm agent and the light mass importance volume um, and plus some people don't have just now started getting into it since the UDK just came out. But uh, stay tuned, I'm going to have more tutorials out. This is Nick Stalker with Demonic Procedures, thanks for watching. Just remember, the demon's inside.